was a blue. It was, so it was a blue pill. What does that blue pill mean? Mm, did you take it like a morning after type of deal or? Shut up! <laughs> no, it was the color. The, the X pill was blue. That's what I'm saying. The X pill was blue. This is MB69 on the Mind Buzz podcast. Coming up right now. The Mind Buzz. Hello, and welcome to another uh, special edition of this podcast on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, Ken, how are you? Hey, I'm going to keep it real with you. I thought your intro, uh, I was like, is this la lagging? Like, I thought it was something going on, because I know there was technical difficulties earlier, but I'm like, oh, that's a part of the thing. But other than that, I'm pretty good. How you feeling today? You slept well? Got I'm good. Got your 10 hours of sleep last night? I got my eight hours uh, during the day. And uh, I, I can't wait for that 10-hour uh, stretch mark, um, you know, in the evening. So uh, what about you? Um, I got, I got some, some hours last night, some hours. Not, not, not as many, but tonight it's going to be a lot more. You know, I did some uh, going back to school next month, so I'm a little procrastinating on the school part. But it's okay. It is all right. Where are you at in the world? I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta, when's Georgia. When's the last time you've been out here? Uh, zero times. Uh, I'm a Californian boy, so uh, born and raised. North, but south, east, west. What part? Southern California. Where it doesn't rain, right? Actually, actually, it's it's raining. It's been pouring all day. Did you go dance in the rain? I'm shivering in my house, and it's only sixty degrees. Yeah. See, I went to California for the first. Well, second time, I count it as a real first time because the first time I was nine months and I, I was told I crit walked down the hallway. My took my first steps and, and my, but my aunt stayed in a very nice part of like SoCal. And so, you know, she's, I think she's like one of those bougie type women. And so with that being said, um, it's cool. I liked it. I went to the Sloss and Swap Meet. Sloss and Swap Meet. You know? Yeah, the sloths and swap me. I went there and I saw a crackhead having a conversation with his imaginary friend. There's tons of uh, crackheads uh, having imaginary conversations with uh, tons of different people. I had Man, a friend. He body slammed him on the trash. He body slammed him on the trash. It was it was entertaining. I actually got some of the footage in my uh, on my camera. And then I went to uh, where did I go to? It was uh. It was by Ralph's. It was um, some type of hood by Ralph's, right? <laughs> and somebody told me, they said, hey, listen, you're uh, you in the worst part of, of like, you were in the most dangerous part of L.A. right now. I'm like, so wh where's everybody at? They said they're asleep because it was 8 o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> but go to Ralph's, the guy goes to that intersection at nighttime, uh, the Ralph's intersection at nighttime. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm that type. Even though I live in the hood, I still get excited to go to other hoods and check it out. You know, I'm ratchet like that. Gotcha. So if I were to go to Atlanta, Georgia, what color would I uh, wear to fit into your hood? Like it blue? Because um, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look good, particularly in red. Uh, so that's why I, I stick to, uh, what, blue. What neighborhood, what neighborhood did you, did you grow up? Like what, what gang type of neighborhood did you grow up in or was around the corner or you went to school and you saw a lot more? A lot of like the bald headed cholos. It was either a bald headed cholo or like a bald headed, like punk guy. 
Wow, I've never yeah. heard of that. I'm learning. I'm learning some history today. So let me ask you: Did you ever feel like you had to conform and be like everybody else, or were you, or were you your own man? Mm, I don't know because I grew up in a, a particularly uh, a, a melting pot of different personalities. Like on the one hand, you had. I mean, th- maybe this is why my my Spotify. Uh, music is so you, I mean, I, I have a uh, notorious B.I.G. on there and then also a friend, uh, Chente on there too. Okay. I'm not sure who Chente is, but okay. <laughs> it's, uh, Vicente Fernandez, the, uh, the Mexican, um, ranchero that just died, uh, oh, a few days ago. Is- yeah. Wow. My condolences. So would you, out of, out of the many celebrity deaths that you've uh, encountered over the years, which one would you say has been the one that's affected you the most? Probably a Nicole Simpson because OJ uh, has been uh, granted early access, released from parole. Of course. Did you, did you actually, like, ever see her out and about somewhere? No. Uh, the, only, the only celebrity that I seen was uh richard simmons is it was it oh richard yeah simmons? my mother my mother used to work out with him wait hold on i'm or thinking of a totally different not not richard simmons it's uh keith wait, richard wait wait no. wait 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 are you talking about ron dmc's brother yes well wrong person we i'm thinking about that gay guy richard is it simmons. is it richard simmons I don't, I feel like that's Richard Nixon, Richard Branson. No, no, I'll, I'll look him up. I'll ask, I'll send a, send a text to my mom and ask her, um, and look it up. But, but Richard Sim, okay. He seems like he's a short guy. Is he shorter than you? No, no, no. It's not Richard. It's, it can be Richard Simmons. No, I didn't see him at the vegan spot. Um, it was the guy, he was like an MC from, um, that one group, Run DMC. Yeah, yes. So you probably either saw Ron, D, M, or C. Ron. Yeah, it was Ron Simmons. Yeah, Joseph Simmons. No, that wasn't him. It, it was it, it, Angela's Angela Simmons' father. Did, is uh is uh is he pretty? Is he average height, short, tall? He was sitting down in the vegan restaurant that I was at. Okay, so how long have you been vegan? Because I'm transitioning to vegan. Are you really? I. I've been vegan. Like, I think I've been vegan for a long time. It just depends on how my money's looking. I don't, I don't really consider myself vegan. I just, I try to stay away from uh, red meat and pork and chicken. I am, I stay, I've, I've stayed away from red meat, pork, shrimp, crab legs. Um, chicken is something that is, I'll eat it like once or twice out the week or so, but you know, I think there's nothing wrong with transitioning your life to, you know, something else. Like, do you, let me ask you, are you the per- only person in your immediate family? Cause I have this issue. Mm-hmm. The only person, I'm the only person in my immediate family who's really health conscious and I'm taking my health a lot seriously. Like what, what about yourself? Are you that type of person as well? I think so. I, I tend to actually think, about uh like what you eat and how things are particularly made um i'm no spring chicken that goes out into the wilderness and you know hunts its own meal and and strip it down and cook it over a warm fire absolutely not but uh you know know i I tend to go to sprouts i tend to go to sprouts like that i want to try that (laughs) Uh, yeah, going, uh, going out to the, actually, I've recently seen a bear, uh, up in Northern brown, California. Brown black bear. It was a small black bear. So what you did, you spoke to it? Yeah, I was talking to it. I was tripping. What did you well, y'all, y'all guys, guys talk about? We talked about how, uh, the human evolution evolved from, uh, different types of organisms and plants and yeah it it was it was pretty strange okay did you ask him why he was by himself i didn't 
I should have asked him. By the so hold, how, how hold. long were y'all how long were y'all talking to each other for? Ken, how do I how do I pronounce your name? For Kendra. one. Ken it's so it's Ken, Kendra. Okay. okay. The whole the whole hood calls me Ken, that's all. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but you were telling me that you have a podcast. Can you tell me what that podcast is and typically what do you what do you uh what's your niche? So my podcast, I love how you were just out there talking to a wild animal and I, I we, nobody knows what happens, you know, if you have them hung up on your banister or so. But my podcast <laughs> It's called a Kendra Crump show. It's about um, a bunch of ignorant mess that we deal with in our adult life, but we make it funny. And I'm starting to incorporate once a month, we're having a very, very uh, political debate about different life situations and stories, right? So I have a segment called, what would you like to ban? B-A-N. For example, I want to ban people who park over the line. Also, I talk about podcasters and I say their names. I talk about horrible podcasters at that. I shout out great podcasters who actually have helped me along the way, you know, but other, but I talk about horrible podcasters and I talk <laughs> about the men in my DMS who try to holler at me and they are married. I talk about them as Ooh. well. And I know y'all are going to be thinking, Kendra, why are you, why are you daring to be different? Why, why living your life on the risky side? Because it's a lot of people out here who will, who will waste your time literally. Okay. And I don't like to have to deal with that. I don't want you dealing with that. So I look at like, hey, I just saved you. And I dared them to come back. Man, they could they could sue you for what? I have receipts. It's not slander. These are actual receipts. These are text messages. These are emails. Emails too? Like emails. I See, I get DMs, right? On Instagram and 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 probably maybe an an instant message on Facebook, but to actually go on email with a letterhead and do all that. Yeah, people, I've I've had you know the going back and forth with folks and just the unprofessionalism. You know, it, I've had people forget that they had their own podcast. I've had people. I've had people tell me, I'll be like, hey, I'm about to be on in like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And they still don't show. They'll be like, okay, cool. And they still don't show up to their own podcast. <laughs> How many times have you run into that problem? I've been doing, so out of 100% of podcasts I've yeah. done, this happens 40% of the time. Gotcha. It's not a good number. 40, 60 is, uh, is a terrible it's a terrible statistic. Very. Uh, so is your podcast like a solo podcast or is it, do you have guests I have, on? I have a panel of people. Oh, uh, okay. It's not a lot. It's like five to seven, you know, other people, other podcasters, people I randomly found off of Instagram, like people who are just fun human beings, hilarious human beings at that, you know? So that's what I do. I try to, I try to, um, I definitely try to come across like raw talent, you know, mm -hmm. raw, so raw that like, you know, it's like you had sex with a, with a prostitute without a condom and now you got syphilis. <laughs> That's how raw I, I, I like for it to be. Uh -huh. I seen on your Instagram that you, you do clubs uh, and stuff like that. Tell me about your first time. Yeah, when I was at the strip club, uh, I went underneath Dynasty. I won actually five thousand on amateur night, but uh, no, I can't be no stripper. I would, you know, I was gonna be the first stripper in history bringing home pocket change because I got two left feet. You would thought I was working for a nonprofit organization. <laughs> but I do my little my comedy show Wednesday nights um, on the south side of Atlanta. Oh, so you and do this weekly? Yeah, until until um January fifth. Mm -hmm. I go back to school, you know, a few days after that. So school comes more important than having to deal with adults who like to talk while you're out there performing. I'm like, wow, what's wrong with y'all? Are y'all sexually frustrated? Why can't, like, you upset? What's going on? What's, you know? 
Okay, so tell me, how, how did you feel going on stage for the first time? Like, how long have you been doing this, by the way? Let me get that question. First out. time I actually did pop, the first time I actually jumped on stage yeah. was first week of October. Oh, okay. So, so this it was is... Like six, it was like seven people in the room, and it, it was okay. Nobody was really laughing. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with y'all? Why ain't nobody laughing? <laughs> Yeah. You know, but then the the guy was like, it's a small crowd. They ain't going to bust out laughing unless you say one thing. That's just like, wow. I had some few, I had a few claps. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was talking for 15 minutes, which was cool because, it, again, it was a small crowd. But then the next time it was a larger crowd and I had like only five minutes to talk. What did you like better? So, did you like, did you like the longer version of time? Uh, with a smaller audience or did you like the smaller version of time with the larger audience you know what i like a lot us i don't mind a smaller version of time with a semi-smaller audience that's Mm -hmm. that's what i like you know not not a larger where everybody's just like staring at you type stuff you know where i'm like okay gotcha how did you even get into this a lot of people kept telling me over the course of time that I was funny. And, you know, it's three things, especially children. And it's three things that don't lie. It's children, a drunk man, and leggings. Okay. Mm. And with that being said, I decided to join the Snapchat world. But at the time, my my um comedy, I'll be like, hey, welcome back to the Kendra Crumb Show, which is why my Instagram name is the Kendra Crumb Show. So, but at the time, my comedy was like Lil' Kim's hardcore album, which actually, here's a fun fact, I wrote some of her lyrics, but we've been beefing since the 90s. Uh, But you know what? I told her if she does not put my name on the credits, I'm going to keep letting folks know that she looks like a character from Saw. No. Uh, Are you you serious about this one? No. I was born in the late 90s. Oh, I don't know. So I know black don't crack unless you're using that crack. And listen, man, <laughs> if I ever catch any black person out there doing meth, I'm going to be looking at you crazy because you know you should stay with crack. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You ever known a black, you ever came across a black person who actually done meth? I've never came across any black person that has done <laughs> coke. You know what? I have not come across that either. Let me tell you, uh, here's, a, here's another joke for you. Why is it that people are, are so proud to show them smoking weed on camera, but they can't show them doing that line. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You no, know, you know what? You know what? A lot of people, a lot of people do cocaine, but you know what's crazy? I have, I've had people come up to me and tell me that they've killed people. I've had people come up and tell me like, not really just walk up and say, I killed someone, but like in conversation, mm-hmm. I've had folks tell me that they kill people. I have folks tell me that they do, molly shrooms uh other types of uh, mushrooms are are amazing by the way no i've done a lot of different drugs in my life and i like shrooms that was my favorite but i would never do it again um i but which i'm like bro how y'all be getting addicted to drugs man i've done this stuff one time and done like how do you how do you get addicted to drugs like i know that sounds so insistent i'm sorry but i'm a comedian i don't really anyway but like i said like i've had people tell me all this like that they are sleeping with married people um i've had people tell me but nobody's gonna actually come up and tell me that they do cocaine i'm like bro why don't y'all t- say that you know you do cocaine because i think cocaine's not sexy it's I a mean, rich white man's drug is it uh, is it uh, can cocaine be sexy like what's sexier is it cocaine sexy or ayahuasca sexy it, it's really not like i've heard of ayahuasca i've heard of that but what i do that? I, I can tell you, before we, we jump into the ayahuasca train, uh, back back a few years in my early 20s, I honestly, now to tell you the truth, cocaine is actually pretty sexy. Like, have you, have you seen a girl, right, um, hanging out in, in her busted girlfriend's apartment, or her, her busted boyfriend's apartment, and she's just sitting down on the floor, with razors and she's probably wearing a tube top cause she's high on cocaine. She really, uh, somebody forgot to turn on the pay the light bill. So it's all in dark anyways, but, 
uh, what I was getting back to is how sexy cocaine can be because no, I've never seen that. It no, hold on, to hear me out. Let's let's hear out my sexy cocaine story. Um, so on, I don't know if the cocaine was sexy, but there was just this one uh girl that I thought that was just she was very very attractive. So the first time that I seen her do cocaine, I'm like, oh my god. This she's a goddess. <laughs> she's a goddess. I mean, snorting that cocaine. She was like, "Fuck it!" Like I don't even need a straw. Fuck your straw and fuck your dollar bill, Gil. I'm gonna I'm gonna snort this thing right off my friend's ass cheek, and that's what she did. I mean, th that's how cocaine can be sexy. I mean, is meth is sexy? This, is, this a, is, this a, is this a fantasy that you want to happen? Maybe. I don't know. You, you, you want me to be that hot girl for you? It could be. It, it could be the cocaine. I mean, I was, I was pretty rocked on it. So I, I, maybe it was just the cocaine fucking with my, my eyes. I had cocaine goggles. On. Wait, wait. Have you done cocaine before, or this is just a quick fancy you just thought of like like last couple minutes? No, cocaine is uh, cocaine is one hell of a drug. So you have done it. Oh yeah. So how'd you get how'd you get involved? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how, so quick quick backstory. How'd you get involved into it? In cocaine? Mm -hmm. Uh just like I just like with any other drug experience. It just happened. It just happened. Yeah. Just I was no, just I, mean, I was were, just were at a party. College? Okay. College, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh early I was like a fresh I was like a freshman or sophomore in college. And we're at a party, and everybody was dropping acid, right? I wasn't there yet. I, w I wasn't there uh, in, in, my, in my psychedelic uh, life. Uh, I wasn't there yet uh, to drop acid, but uh, a buddy of mine pulled out a little white baggie. And he was like, you want to party, Gil? And I was just looking at him. I'm like, is she going to party? Because if she's going to party, I'll fucking party. I'll fucking party so hard <laughs> so uh she did it i forgot her name i think it was like vicky victoria i don't know some crackhead name but vicky vicky uh, probably fairly, i don't know fairly odd parents but i thought vicky. she i thought this was the hottest thing she had blue hair your tits are all out uh snoring cocaine like, okay like double d tits or describe the tits for me double d tits mm. and there's veins on them too Oh, that's that's they were bought, right? They're veiny tits. I don't know. No, she was there in her early twenties. I don't think. I mean, do girls in their early twenties get? Uh, Listen, you got women in their early twenties whose breasts are, are sagging down to their knees, like they are the African grandmother feeding the village. Anything is possible. <laughs> that's irresponsible. What do you think about those uh, those BBLs? I think that is a mistake, and I think people are dying slowly. They're killing themselves to try to look like me because I have <laughs> a body from the gods. I'm going to tell you my measurements. 38D, 28-inch waist, and 45 hips. Okay. Um, are we using the metric system wet, here? Or Yeah, you're going to like, have a wet dream tonight. Just want to let you know that. Um, and everybody else listening because I know you got 30,000 listeners. Um, and yeah, don't slide in my DMs with penis pictures, guys. Like, have respect for yourselves. But yeah. no, this is like the actual metric system. <laughs> have respect for yourself. Uh, like, 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 have you ever just randomly sent a woman that you did not know a dick pic? No, I'd be petrified. If is I it, wanted, it... if I wanted to d disappoint my, uh, if I wanted to disappoint somebody, it wouldn't be some stranger on the internet. I mean, I can do that all by myself with my parents. So, uh, why am I going to send a uh, poor girl, uh, you know, cute or not, a uh, dis disappointing picture of my penis? I'm not going to do that. I, I recently made a video uh, yesterday about, you know, no, it was Friday. It was Friday uh, about 
you know, guys just sending that out, you know, you got to have like, like, you don't want to just send it all at one time, you know, because then what happens on day two? You know, but I suppose mm. said, like, at the, end of, at the end of, like, what happens on day two? What are you going to do next? You got to, yeah. like, give her something to want more. Put a bow on it, you know? But my thing is, right, I just want to see it in person, okay? Why, why send this to me? Cause like yeah, you send it to me. Then what? I need I need you to see, I need to be you to be on your way, or we need to be somewhere in the middle, somewhere. Okay, I'm the type of woman now. I am not dealing with any guy. You know, if it looks like an inchworm where I can thumb it, okay. I don't I don't have a challenge when it's in my mouth. I'm not dealing with you. I'm not. I like I need you to whip it out. If you, let me tell you something about myself, Gil. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you can raise if listen. If your penis hangs low, your balls on soft, you can raise your voice at me. <laughs> okay. If you want tacos tonight, babe? You want tacos? That's what I'm be like. That's a uh, uh, forewarning. So you, so that's on your warning label, pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the warning. Yeah, type. I mean, but like, but you, but you know what? Here's the thing, right? I don't want, but you know what they're doing with men as well? How you said BBLs for women? They're doing penis extensions and height extension. But that's acceptable. We can we accept that as a society? Can we can we uh can we normalize can we normalize uh penis extensions? Can we but do for that? For what please? reason? Be gl- be why not be happy with what God gave you? Why are you trying to be like everybody else? Ever since uh Dirk Diggler came onto the scene, Mark Wahlberg. Um, we, we've have to have those extensions. We, we, we have to, I mean, what, women, what is Mark Wahlberg and Dirk? I don't even know who Dirk Diggler is, but what did they do? <laughs> he's a, he, he's a fictional character from Boogie Nights. <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg, do? Mark Wahlberg played, uh, as Dirk Diggler in a, in a classic film, by the way. Um, was and, this when he was in his rap career, Marky Mark? Uh, I think it was right before his, uh, or right after. Hold on, I'm gonna Google that because uh, people need to know. The world you know needs to know about Dirk Diggler. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna there. You know, I I don't mind. I I would like to be like uh uh Skittles taste the rainbow. I ain't never got no hair from no white person. What if you don't mind me asking? What is your ethnicity? I am, uh, I'm a human, no, um, I'm Hispanic, I'm Mexican-American, I'm Chicano. Ah, two uh, apples espanol? Uh, negative. Uh, only when I'm drunk, uh, and when I need to eat food what'd from be, a taco what'd truck. You, what'd you be saying? You be saying baño? What'd you be saying when you drunk? Mmm, uno cerveza, por favor. Okay, so Boogie Nights, 1997, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> I speak Spanish. Uh, well, I'm cinquenta percent fluent, or yeah. used to be. Used to be. Dirk but Lig- I know certain phrases. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on Dirk Diggler's uh, cock. It, 13, 13 inches. That to me is ridiculous, though. There's nothing wrong with a cool eight and a half. <laughs> not because you got to realize at some point it starts hurting that woman. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point, like she's gonna be saying more and more, but that's a lie. Like, yeah. You so, know what? I I I don't know. I just think that guys, people in general, right? You should be happy with what you got. Yes, my ad. I used to be called people in school. People, I had this one guy. Let me tell you what what has the evolution of men over okay. the course of time. Let me hear it. I'm oh, listening. Man. So there was over a course of time. Okay, let's get let's get to 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 middle school. Middle school guys. This is this is why it's important to teach your sons about sexual harassment. Okay, just because she wears a certain outfit does not mean she's asking for it. I don't know where that came from. But y'all need to stop that, okay? But I would have people in school talk about how big my butt was. My mother noticed my shape. I had a lower half before my upper half came. Um, but my mother knows my shape a lot sooner than I noticed it. And you know why I looked at some pictures when I was like five? I'm like, damn, can you go to ass at five? <laughs> so yeah, I don't <laughs> You know, I would put that out, but here then the predators gonna come. I'm like, bro, it makes sense. You 
35 years older than me trying to holler at me. And you over here gawking over my baby picture. Anyway, so with that being said, I um I was high school. High school, kids would call me Big Booty Kendra. This guys would be like, make that ass clap. I don't, I still don't know how to shake nothing. I promise <laughs> you. I promise you. That's why I never wanted to go be a stripper. Um, what else would they call? What this one guy, he was like the token black dude. That's what he would call himself. The token black dude. Oh, okay. Because he's that one black dude who hung around all white folks or something. You know, they listen, the white was like, Hey, hey, I'm not racist. I got a black friend. He was a black friend. <laughs> just the, so, just the one just the one in the in the neighborhood just one and so he said to me he he said that you he says i would i would love to this is when we in high school right now mind you i left high school a pure virgin okay mm-hmm. like pure like the most i ever done in high school was i showed i showed my titties to my neighbor that was three houses up i showed him um and my titties and he showed me his penis and my mom like oh my goodness it's so big so i said something to him like so many years later like a couple years ago i said hey man do you remember that time we was in your garage flashing each other like kendra please do not tell nobody this story okay we were in high school i said listen i'm gonna tell the story i just won't say your name so i keep telling the story but i don't say his name (laughs) anyway but but you know what? And I actually I said to him, I said, hey, listen, when you're younger, everything is much bigger. Like, but when you get older, like things that you thought was big was small. <laughs> That's all I had said to him because he has a girlfriend. So that would have gone, you know, crossing the line. I can't do yeah. that. Back to the story. But I remember, like I said, I left high school a pure virgin. So the, so the token black guy, he has said, uh, he said that he would, he would give me head because my ass is so big. I'm like, huh? What? Uh, what? <laughs> what? Like that's a treat? <laughs> right? So so we get we get to college, we get to community college. Mm-hmm. I loved it, man. I was hot commodity. Finally all the guys I had a, uh, finally I started having guys who didn't look like a squirrel with a trash bag wrapped around, you know, their head try to, you know, holler at me. But here's the thing. This is the issue that I had, Gil. We are all 18. Why am I the only one with a license? Mm-hmm. Why am I the only one with a car? Honestly, let me ask you something. At what age did you get a license and a car, if you remember? If I remember correctly, I failed three times on the driving <laughs> test. What, the hell, what uh, happened, Gil? What happened? What happened? What happened, Gil? The first time I woke up late, so I missed that one. <laughs> my, Why'd you wake up late? What my, time was it? Was it 6 o'clock in the morning? No, it was around like 11 a.m. Gil, you have no excuse. What the hell? I slept. <laughs> so uh, at that age, I think I was like 18. I was like, ah, do I want to <coughs> sleep for 30 minutes or do I want to drive for the rest of my life? Fuck it. Sleep. <laughs> Snooze button all okay. the way, baby. And then the okay. second time. I borrowed my cousin's car and uh, I got in there and it it was fine. I mean, we got there early. Thank God. Um, And they started looking like, I guess there's this checklist that you have to do before you go in a, you know, and they have to test the safety of the car or whatever that means, you know, Uh, big machines. Right. Uh, But, as she was going through all the seatbelts, she was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. We can't, we can't conduct a test today. I was like, why? She's like, your fucking seatbelts, dude. They're not even, they're, they don't work. I was like, we really need seatbelts to take this type of test? Yes, on, you lady. need seatbelts, Gil. I didn't know. I was 18. It was my first time driving. <gasps> right? Okay, so let me ask you something. Your parents didn't teach you about driving prior to taking your test maybe putting gas into the car at 12 years old okay you know what all right so what happened the third time what happened the third time uh the third time actually uh i just said fuck it and i i just left i mean the the third time um because i i was driving too fast right yeah i mean i did the but I, I thought I thought that was just like so bullshit of why because I was driving fast. I mean, come on. 
People drive yeah, fast all wait, the time. Yeah, wait, wait. In her, in the, in the driver's defense, in the driver's defense. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm gonna play devil's advocate because speeders, super speeders, are and they, they can like harm people like that speeding mm. and then you crash. And I was, I was watching before we got on. I've been watching all day today idiots in cars compilation. So people, it's 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 people losing control somehow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's hilarious. I'm like, bro, like people don't know how to drive. Uh- <laughs> hence why. So, hence why you want to kill people that drive uh, that park over the line, right? You know what? <laughs> I hate people who park over the line, man. I hate yeah. that. Like, bro, like now you're making me park out further. I don't like that. Like, I don't like that. That's horrible. So the fourth time, how'd you finally get your license? How'd you finally get your, how, you know, the fourth time was the it fo- within the same year? Or did you come back like a year later? No, it took me like 10 years later. And then I came back and really, did it really take you 10 years? Same back. I came back with the same car with the fucked up seatbelt. No, uh, no, I, I finally passed it. I think, uh, I think you have to wait a couple of weeks or something like that before you have to take your, your test again. I think they give you three times. And then after the, the third time that you fail, you have to wait a couple of, I think wait a couple of months, but I finally came back and I passed it. I mean, with flying colors, but, um, I know. Do you have a, do you have a round of applause machine you can insert? Right. I'll do may I'll do that after post post editing. Okay. But, uh, no, I mean with that, uh, I mean, driving, but I wanted to ask you, okay, so you're saying that, um, you don't like the one picture, one with the one dick pictures, right? So what if they do like a slideshow of <laughs> their, their manhood? I mean, what if they start like first, want, they start on their ankles and then the camera starts panning out and you can see their hairy legs. Right. And it just keeps on panning out and you can see some balls. Right. And then it just pans out and you see the whole shaft and uh, see what you got to work with. But what if they send you pictures of balls first? Like how disgusting would that be? (laughs) Is that would you appreciate that better than the shaft? I want them to just <laughs> wait until I say I want you once I've seen it in person and after we I leave I say stroke it for me. But that's the thing, you won't ask for a dick pic. I think that's why these males are doing it because it's something that you're not asking for that they 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 think in their mind they're like, "Oh yeah, this girl's going to go crazy when I send her a picture of my penis." Mm-mm. Right? I think I think what it is is that I just rather just show up in person to like so I won't waste my time dealing with you because in my mind I think that we're gonna be with each other, you know. If you say mm-hmm. the right things, I'm like just let me see it, and if it's not something I like, I'm sorry, I'm cool. I'm not wasting my time with you. Um, it's a couple things I'm not wasting my time with. <laughs> if you give if you don't give great head, I'm not wasting my time with you either. Yeah, oh yeah, oh definitely. And I can and, and I think about it now. Imagine there's, there's, there's probably a, a man in the world right now that's probably listening to this podcast and he's, he, he's just like you, Kendra, maybe he's just like you and he's sick and tired of unsolicited tip pictures. Nobody sends that to men. Women don't send that to men without paying. I made guys pay. They want to see it. I made oh. $75 today. Oh, Okay. Well, there you go. There, uh, men are just throwing out free dick pics and yeah, y'all y'all mess up the game, y'all right. y'all mess yes. up the game. Dude, man, what are you guys doing? What are we doing wrong? That's that's what we're doing wrong. I had a sixty-three year old man send me a penis today. What happened to capitalism? How old was he? Sixty-three. Sixty-three. And this was message number six. He, uh, this is how it went. Mm-hmm. He slides my DM first. He says, hey, beauty, how are you doing? I said, hey, how's it going? So, you know, I don't know if he speaks. I don't like typecasting people because there are people who are Asian. And I have made the mistake where I'm like, they don't speak any English. And they speak better English than me. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, shoot. 
So with that being said, he said that he has been to the U.S. four times. He sent me three messages. The second message says, hey, just want to let you know I got a really big penis. Just want to let you know. Then the third message, he just sends a picture. And it literally was like, let me show you. Hold on. It was like this, but half of it, like, for, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Up here. Oh, wait, okay. no, 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 no. Up here. Oh, wait, okay. Wait. Right there. It's just getting smaller. And so what I do is I report the picture and I report their account twice just so it can get deleted. And that's it. And then I block them. But how did you determine that he was 63? That's he what I'm confused. Like, I'm 63. He says I'm 63 years old. I uh, speak Portuguese, English, French. That's what he told me. And I said, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, that's great. And I was going to respond to that until he sent that to uh -huh. me. I'm like, why, the, what, why would you send this to me, right? I don't know, man. I saw this, pit, I saw this video of, um, it was on, like, floating on Instagram, mm -hmm. where it had this lion. It was at the zoo. And it said, man, lions, the caption is, lions don't don't give a F. And the lion had teabagged the, the other lion. I don't know if it was a woman or a man. You know, I think in the animal kingdom, they can swing whatever way they want because they're not judging each other. Here in America, they judge you for swinging, mm -hmm. not the way that they want you to swing, right? Go figure. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like I said, man, it, it, it to me is, I think the thing is, at the end of the day, it's all about your self-respect. You know, if you're going to send out, at least have some money you know, mm -hmm. have some money for that, for that, for that person or whatever. Like just, you know, if you as a man, unless she asked for it, say, Hey man, okay, this ain't for free. So yeah. This is how much it costs. Right. Yeah. That's why they don't have money because they're, they're, se they're sending free, uh, dick pics out. Do you remember the very first time you had a woman ask you to send yours out to her? Mm. No, because majority of them have been unsolicited. I, I don't think I've never, I've never been asked. Well, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> How many times have you been blocked? Uh, just joking. No, I've never sent an unsolicited. I've always been scared. I'm just like, why, why am I going to send you this? You know, I mean, maybe high school. Was the first time I did so that. So that girl that you did that, did you end up going raw with her as well? I feel like you guys went raw. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It was a super weird sexual experience. I mean, uh, technology was, I mean, we barely had cell phones right back then. And uh, the whole sexting uh, craze was pretty, was pretty relevant. I mean, um, I mean, now it's, it's sex, I mean, uh, sex and cell phones have come a long way from the early 2000s, right? I mean, you have so many different uh, sexual outlets on the internet now. You can masturbate with somebody across the, the world. I mean, Thomas Edison has got to be fucking rolling over in his grave right now because he was like, dude, I gave you fucking electricity and you guys are masturbating in front of screens with uh, people across the world. I mean, come on, Americans. It's the advancement. I thought, I, you know what I think it was back in the day? I think back then they literally uh did a lot more and they had a lot more fun and they did you know whatever it might have been i feel like back in the day like in the 1700s they were a little bit more you know out there you know they were doing stuff that people didn't like really shame them upon i feel like you think so i, f I feel like it like people were just having kids and having sex with whomever they wanted to have sex with mm. they like they had a few they had a few stds but it wasn't like it was something that was incurable I think they did have STDs. They just didn't know how to identify that. Oh, shit, this is an STD. Have you ever known someone who had, like, multiple STDs? Multiple? Yeah, like, you just, like, they would tell you, like, bro, I got burned again. 
<laughs> no, I can only imagine that. Uh, somebody just DMing me. Hey, yo. Yo, bro, I got crabs. I had... I've never come... I've come across one person with HIV. Mm-hmm. She was playing with needles when she was a child. Oh, I've man. Come, well, not like child, child. Like, she was, like, high school. Mm-hmm. She's still a child. Oh, yeah. Um, I had one person tell me they had trick, trichomonious. Trichomonious? Person, yeah. What is that? It's the lowest level of, of an STD. Mm. Like level one STD. <laughs> so if you're going to get an STD, trick, uh, what, what was this thing called? Trick, trichomonious. Trichomonious. I just say trick for short. Trick. Uh, is that why, uh. Is that why pimps call people that uh, purchase their women, is that why they call them tricks, uh, short for trichomonious? You know what? I'm looking at my cat. Let me, let me show you her. She looks like she might be dead, though. I don't know if you can see her or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, she's, oh, there she is right there. There she is. She looks like she's dead. Gotcha. I think she just, I think, I don't know what happened to her. You know, you can you can attend attend the funeral. I'm looking at her. I'm like, I, I hope that she's like she can't hear you, but I'm like, I'm just looking. I'm like, this this guy is a fool. <laughs> like you have you have you have this. Do you have this type of humor where it's like when people first start talking to you, they're like, oh man, I'm, I'm wonder like we gonna vibe well. But I'm like, bro, I've been enjoying this entire conversation. Like you just have this like nonchalant attitude. Trichomonious. I love it. Is that what you named your cat? I'm going to name my cat Trichomonious. I mean, how fucking badass is that name? Wait, okay. So I've met somebody who has had gonorrhea and chlamydia. Okay. I've met multiple people with crabs. I've never met nobody with syphilis or um, what else? HPV. I met, I've never met nobody with herpes. Um, yeah. Kendra, Kendra, I, I imagine you. Holding a, just a giant list of of people that you're like, okay, you you have. I feel like you have this like database of of just people that you've talked to, and uh, you know some may have syphilis or trichomitis, um, uh, and you categorize them to who's who's uh, you know who who. Where are you at potentially to receive any of that, right? I mean, I I don't know how it is in Georgia, but in in California, uh, you know what I heard? Uh, since we're on <laughs> speak speaking of STDs in California, uh, that's how they that's how they find out like the attractiveness of each state is based upon the numbers of people that have STDs in that state. So what? the the more attractive that a state will be uh, depends on the population of people that have STDs in that uh, in that state. And New Jersey is up there. I think second is uh, uh like Washington or something like that. But yeah, uh, I'm excited to see what uh, Georgia will fall on on that state of attractiveness. That's a shame, man. You know, I used to work in a doctor's office, so technically I am a doctor. I remember one time there was this one guy, um, a couple, a few years younger than me. He actually had uh, two STDs. I didn't know that you can have two, but it's a virus. So he had two STDs. And I had said, I'm going to try him to see what he's going to say, even though mm-hmm. I already knew that what, his, what his result was. And I, I tried him to see if he was going to fall for debate, and he fell for debate. And I'm like, thinking, I'm like no, I'm okay. I changed my mind. I don't want to do nothing with you. I'm like, bro, you, you got the doctor just told you you got an STD too, and you're still out here trying to you you were gonna take the bait of of messing with me. Oh, just, let's put a condom on. Some people think that I had this one girl tell me that she still got a S. She said she got an STD even though she wore a condom. Oh, okay. Well, you can still transmit STDs like through the mouth, right? So that's why what I do, oh, I should have done this last night, but I, I trusted him. So I got some head last night. It was whack, though. So, whack uh, so head. What you gotta do. See, that's why people yeah. tune into this podcast, to, to hear Kendra talk about whack head. 
but uh okay it, it was so you supposed to check a person's mouth mm-hmm. but what i do is i asked them when's the last time they've been with somebody i said i need you to be really honest i don't care if it was last night they're like no it was three months ago wait hold on do you do you start this conversation like like on the way to the room like i feel like this is a... <laughs> i i i do i start the conversation earlier that day no 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 because okay it depends on how it happens right mm-hmm. like okay i will have a conversation with that person about because i don't like i don't like planning anything i like it to be natural but if gotcha. it was with somebody new you got to kind of plan it you know and know what's going on oh yeah of course okay, okay. And so what happened with this particular guy, like this has been like a couple of weeks of having just regular conversation. Gotcha. And then he has said something about, he said one time, he said he talked, he talks uh, to, to the cooter and he, he'll tell her to come 10, 10 times. Whoa. And he says, it just comes 10 times. I'm like, how do you do that? Right. And mm-hmm. he just broke it down, like how he does it. And then he sent me a picture of his tongue and I'm like, science. I said, bro, I, I said to him, I was like, listen, man, I said, I said, I wish, cause I'm now what I'm doing. This is just so sounds so prostitution. Like, but I don't care. You know, I'm keeping it real. <laughs> it's like you kept it real about your cocaine. Wait, a quick question. How'd you finally break yeah. it? How'd you finally, finally break the cocaine? Uh, was it a habit or you just did it one time? No, I did a, you know, a few, eight times, 10 times. Uh, <laughs> How'd you finally stop it? Like what made you finally say, okay, I got to put this down for good. A day. Um, uh honestly i don't know uh it would no it wasn't it wasn't a really it wasn't a habit or anything it was just it was the kind of experiences a that just thing. yeah a social thing that did it a couple of times and that was it and uh the last time that i remember taking it uh they gave it to, well they gave it to me in powder form but i looked at it and i was like dude this is fucking meth wow how'd you know it was meth because i'd done meth before and i told these guys I was you like, know what wait 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 <laughs> wait wait i'm waiting <laughs> i'm waiting i almost flipped out my seat i almost flipped out my seat okay wait hold on so hold i on, no wait. hold on let me finish my story uh no, and fine. then after I'm that fine. After that, I was just like, you know what? Uh, this is not for me. I mean, I'm good. I'm good now. And then, like ten years later, there was another party, and I was just like, fuck it, let's do it. Let's all go do cocaine now. No, but um. Wait. So, so that that was true. It was another party. You just decided you broke. You came out of retirement. No, it wasn't. It was always just there. You know, like uh, I'm, I'm more of a. Uh, no, and I'm, I'm not an amphetamine person. That's just, uh, it's just different. I don't know. This is, there's a stigma. There's a stigma to it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't a habit. So um, I was going to say, so let me ask you this. And, mm-hmm. and again, I, I appreciate your honesty. Do you feel that if you go to another party and it's there, will you do it again? Or is it just more so like you just have to probably be in that mode to do it or that mood or so? No, probably the mood. I probably wouldn't do it. If somebody had now that, now that you're older, yeah. But however, if somebody had uh, dimethyltryptamine, if they had DMT, or or any other form of psychedelic, and it just came about, then I'd be like, oh yeah, let's try it. I want to see some fucking elves. I want to see some machine elves. You know, I, I'm I don't want to be looking at uh, another coke whore uh, showing her tits and doing that. No, I'm just I'm, I'm over it. I'm over Coke and tits. It's all about machine elves and uh, plants. Now, how'd you how'd you how'd you do meth? Quick story. How'd you how'd that happen? We were. Do you okay? So you know how some people, you know how some people, uh, they hot box a Honda uh, a ninety three Honda Accord uh, with marijuana. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen somebody? Uh, hot box a car with meth it's fucking it's strange it's the strangest no, thing in the world i've never seen that i've never it's, seen that it's the strangest thing in the world and you think you're like you're the coolest person ever but you're not you're just high on meth you know 
Now, is it true? Now, here's my question, right? So the person who said that they did meth for the first time while they were in California, they said they OD'd that first time. How does everybody's body differ? Like, how does that end up happening where you might OD off of something the first time and then you might not? Like, I'd be thinking about that. Right. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just, it, it could be genetics. It could be uh, the form of substance that that you have, like... God no, I wouldn't do that now because a lot of a lot of the the amphetamine drugs out there that are in the black market are all cut with fentanyl. Do you hear about all those uh those overdoses uh because of some you know drug dealers are cutting cutting uh you know they're cutting heroin, they're cutting um cocaine, they're cutting uh meth with fentanyl which is a highly very very highly uh fatal fatal drug so what is fentanyl supposed to be used for in the first place that's why i'm like how they even place it in the drug what's it supposed to be used for right that's i i need to i'm gonna google that right now so what is what is fentanyl even used for right but you know what my thing is right and that's why i said man i used i I miss the good times where weed used to make me you know, laugh and, and feel good about myself. Now it just has me stuck in my thoughts thinking like how messed up my life is. And I'm like, and it makes me paranoid and I get extremely horny and I'd be ready to go masturbate. I don't have time for that. So for <laughs> me personally, I just had to stop smoking weed. <laughs> really? I, qu- I quit like a month ago. What? No shit. So how was that? How's your month been? been fine i I don't have it like here's the thing i was never a heavy drug i was never a heavy smoker like i always would do it in moderation Mm -hmm. you know but like but there were times where i got to that point in my life where i kept thinking to myself you know we do stuff when we're we, we do stuff when we're younger because of our friends right our peers but you have to really think back what is the real reason why i'm doing this Right. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if you're doing it on a day to day base or on a week to week base. Yeah. I didn't have I didn't have a reason. I really didn't have a reason as to why I kept doing it. I was just doing it. And so with that being said, I said, OK, Kendra. If you're doing it just because everybody else is doing that makes you a follower. You're too old for that now. Do it because there yeah. has to be a real reason. Right. And so I just like I said, when I now here's the thing, if I'm on vacation, Okay, cool. I'll do it while I'm on vacation. I'm feeling good. Let me hit hit the blunt while I'm driving, all that type of stuff. But if I am like got to go to work, and mind you, one thing I learned, and again, it's not no type of you know on, on a serious note. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to downplay nobody or anything else like that. But you know, the problem is a lot of people. And that's why I'm going back to school in in, in uh, at Georgia State, which is a PWI. You know, because I graduated, as you can see, my diploma right there. That was an HBCU, you know. So yeah. um, I know, like, if I pretty, I'm pretty sure if I hang out with the right crowd and go to parties, the same stuff that you was offered there, it'll be offered where I'm at. Because um, it's anywhere. But I really, I'm going to keep it real with you. I always want to try cocaine in Colombia where it's natural and it's pure mm-hmm. and it's authentic. Not here in America. Like, they chop and screw and they mess cocaine up is terrible but and plus it's cheaper in colombia so you want it is out here you want organic vegan uh non-gmo cocaine that's it and i and i'd like i say i do stuff one time and i never do it again because i already have it in my mind this is horrible i pray yeah. over it i gotta pray over it i gotta bring god into it the yeah. real you know okay not not the same a different god the same not the god that these rappers be like i want to thank god who's ahead of my life sir the god your god's the illuminati um <laughs> <laughs> but no back on a serious note so i'm going into child psychology realm oh, okay because i know that a lot of our trauma stems from childhood and the reason why you have so many crappy adults out here is because you um they haven't properly rooted that trauma out you have people out here who will try to say okay you know uh let me smoke weed to get rid of my trauma but after you're over the high it's still there so it's like they are consistently tricking i remember i came across this 18 year old he told me 18 a few years back Mm -hmm. he told me that he cannot 
if he doesn't smoke weed, he's not going to be able to remember to eat or go to sleep. And he cannot do a normal bodily function. And you know what the thing, and I said, and you come across people who actually smoke weed, like the stoners, and you'll say, well, why, you know, they say, they can, they'll say, I'll, I can stop when I want to. And I'm like, so yeah. why don't you stop? Well, I don't want to. Um, my cat just meow. Let me let her out the room. But other than that, like, the thing about it is, is that that to me is, is they, they, they can't, they can't stop, you know, and, and people, and I'm like, has, have people not, tr- and it's again, it's not no type of, me trying to diss anybody out there. I'm just asking in general, have Mm -hmm. you not tried therapy for your anxiety? Have you not tried? Cause there are plenty of positive. If you saw some thigh meat, I'm sorry. Happy birthday. I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) Um, So, so there, there are plenty, like, like I said, you, my entire thing is like, there are other positive reinforcements because I'm telling you life is always going to happen. And I think oftentimes another reason why I'm going into the vegan lifestyle is because that meat that we're eating, you don't know what that, where that meat had come from. You don't know if that chicken was stressed out and you're eating that you're in, you're digesting that. Yeah. So I think the thing is, if you cut that out, okay, I mean, you cut that out, you're still going to have your issues and everything, but I feel like it'll help your depression because they're like, I'm a comedian, but I'm depressed some, like a lot of times. I was sad for two days last week and I don't even know why I was sad. I was just sad, you know? And so, like I said, it's for me personally, it over, and then I think what it what came to, right? I got, I had this back in 2018, I was hurt at work and I had, had to be out for a few months and my mom was taking care of me. And I had this notion in my head. I said, listen, I'm going to stop smoking weed permanently when I um, either a smoke a blunt with Snoop Dogg or B, which he actually passed me his blunt in concert. True story. He's a skeleton. What? Like, Good grief. That's that. He's a, that's that Coke he's on. Uh, <laughs> or B <laughs> he is uh, or B I am going to try all the strains in the, in America. But at the time, this is 2018. At the time, it was 4,000 strains. Whoa. Now you have, you have like 30,000 strains now. They make a new strain every day. That's going to be freaking impossible. So literally, I was trying to, I think for me, it, like I said, I wasn't addicted, but I felt like I was, was being left out if I yeah. did not do any form of, uh, and, and you know what the thing is, Gil? What bothers me is when I come across adults who, who start, who say, you know, Hey, do you smoke or drink? Like, that's one of the first questions they ask. I'm like, why is this always the first question that you ask? Why don't you ask me other questions that matter a lot more than this? Oh, well, I mean, most adults do. So you just assume that's what I do. No, I I mean, I guess, yeah, I did assume I said, but you can't assume everybody does that. Like, like, you know, they're going to be adults. I I got a sister of mine who's never smoked or, or, or drunk a day in her life. I got, I got, I know people like that. I know people who ain't sexually active. So I don't know why people get this notion in their head where like that always has to be the first question. Why not say, Hey, what are things that you like doing? Mm -hmm. Or, and let that be, you know, what's the last book you've read or what's, what's the last, uh, cool documentary that you watched. Right. Um, no, I, I totally get that. But my question is like, how did you feel? Cause, uh, usually I go on, um, what are they, the there's these specific uh Revenge. no there there's this uh specific uh word for it it's a tolerance break that that's where i'm going so sometimes i'll take these tolerance breaks uh with uh thc and cbd and um just like anything like uh caffeine like i don't there's some days where i i go you know days without a cup of coffee uh, there's, there's some days where I go, uh, without, uh, THC and I have some of the coolest, probably most vivid dreams when I'm not, uh, on THC. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So how long before, right yeah, like how long do, okay. So give me the, give me the time standpoint to where you were, uh, taking THC, smoking, uh, ingesting edibles, whatever. Right. And uh, so you said it, it's been a month since since you've smoked it anything. Was right? My last time was at my comedy show. And I remember at my comedy show, I was just talking too fast. I was talking way too fast. And the, and the promoter, he was like, you need to slow down. Mm. 
Mm. And when I when I when I stopped when I was sober one day, I said, and I was talking. He's like, "You did a great job," and I'm like, "Hmm," you know. So I think what it is, how how do I feel? Like it doesn't like I said, I'm not I'm not shaking in in the middle of the night. Mm. You know, I'm not scratching my. Oh face. yeah, of course, yeah. I don't have, I don't have withdrawals. It's just like right. I think the thing is for me, I just it used to like I said for me personally. It used to be something that was very fun to mm-hmm. do. I was really enjoying it, but Absolutely. I think as time progressed, I just, I have other stuff on my mind that I, that I feel is more important than doing that right now, you know, because I'm really, I mean, you, again, I can chase my dreams and be high, but I do podcasts. Well, I'm, I'm taking yeah. a hiatus when I go back to school, but I'm doing these podcasts, right? I don't like being high on the podcast because mm-hmm. I literally will start over talking and I'm just too off the wall and I'm crazy. And it's just like, that's not a good look. I don't like Nipsey hustle once said, that. he once said, um, and by the way, Slauson's uh, donuts that's right behind his store. It's nasty as hell. Don't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no taken. So Nipsey, Nip- Nipsey hustle. It was a, he said that he had stopped smoking weed for a period of time. Him and Lauren, they both stopped, right? And he said he stopped smoking weed for a period of time because he didn't like his eyes. Would, like, my thankfully, my eyes would never get red. They would just get low. Um, and that was it. So I never, I never, that was the only way you would have been able, like, if you actually looking at me, or if I just like walk past you slowly or something like that, and you ask me a question, I'm like, "Huh?" That's the only way you'll be able to know. So mm. he said, but he would. He said he never liked being on camera, and he was high because he says at the end of the day, that's the image that you got to represent. And I'm like, Nipsey, I had to dab him up <laughs> through, through the screen because he's like, "That's true." Like, because the, the camera is zoomed in on your face, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, you want to always be your best. You always want to, like, you never walk outside the house looking like crap because you never, you always want to look your best. If you look good, you'll feel good type of stuff. Right. And so Lauren said that if you're not smoking, I'm not smoking. And that's the type of person that you need in your corner type of stuff, you know? But with that being said, I think for me, um, I, again, and, and, and you know, also the thing about it is I, I hate the fact, right? People, this is my issue as well. So you guys got dispensaries. The problem with dispensaries, unless you got a dispensary where it's very inexpensive, I don't even came across a couple in, uh, dispensaries out, out on the West Coast where there was a one, one pre, I like pre-rolls. Okay, I could actually do the, you know, and I know how to roll, but I'm like, look, if they put some in the pre-roll, I, I don't really care. Maybe I should have never been smoking. I don't know. Like, I don't really care. Like, like people don't even, <laughs> some people are like, Kendra, like, you still, you get the pre-rolls from the front of, yes, like, I, I don't, like, what did they put yeah. some? Guys, it, I mean, then, I mean, can you sue them? Is that like, can you really prove that, that yeah. they, it came from them? I can only imagine somebody calling the cops on a dispensary and the cops coming to their house. <laughs> and then you see this kid coming out, walking out in his underwear, the sweater and a beanie, his eyes all red. <laughs> they put something in me, smoke. The dispensary you know down the street put something in me smoke. I'm high. Take them. You know, let me and let me say let me say something. You need yeah. to go do some comedy, man. You are funny. You need to go to the house of laughs or whatever y'all got out there in, in LA. <laughs> but but I'm and I know we're we're kind of wrap, running out of time. We can do like a part two or whatever. But I'm a, I'm gonna say this last part and then I guess part two or whatever you want to say. But. I think the thing is about it. Here's the thing. I've been to a few dispensaries. I found a pre-roll for $7. Cheaper mm. than what I pay out here Pretty in Atlanta. Good. Okay. Se- and it was fire. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Chicago, Illinois dispensary, don't go there. They, for four pre-rolls, <laughs> $110. Four. Whoa. It's like uh, you're shopping, you're, you're buying weed from like a Gucci store or something. Right, <laughs> right. Um, are these Gu- are these Gucci pre rolls? <laughs> these damn these damn things are good. <laughs> Italian pre rolls. Oh my! Let me finish. 
Shut up. No, go on, stop. Stop making me laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I bet you be getting, I bet you be getting women throw their draws at you on the fly because you were just funny, man. You know, you have this nonchalant attitude. You just don't be caring. They th- if, if, if they're throwing them, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just don't be. You want the, hang, you good. Want the Walmart hang straws or Victoria's Secret boy shorts? Which one you want? I want, I want the parachute uh, ones, the large ones. Keep me warm at night. It's getting cold. Southern California. Anyway, back to the story. Back to the story. So, like I said, I think the thing is, here's the thing, right? right. That's, that's why I kept trying to figure out. I'm like, why do y'all still have plugs out there if you got a dispensary? Like, what's the point? <laughs> that, like, people being stupid in that way. It's so stupid to me. That doesn't that's make sense, one. right? I guess because they want to sell to 10 year olds. Uh, number two, yeah. these plugs ought to be ashamed of themselves. Number two, I got a plug out here, right? I mean, he's 50 years old, which that's already sad as is. But anyway, he's 50 years old. I'm going to tell you the sad story, this sad story in two minutes or less. Okay. 50, 50 years old. His mother, he, 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 he works five miles away from his home, three miles away from his home. Okay. His mom picks him up and drops him off there every day uh he lives with his mother um and he tried hollering at me Mm -hmm. and i didn't get a free three five i didn't get nothing i don't get a discount okay um yeah he got shot at a couple times because nobody likes him serving his turf Mm. uh the problem with men out there they're late um, they try to put oregano in your weed. They will finesse you. Oh, this that loud? No, it's that quiet. We got that. <laughs> they say they say they say zaza. That means exotic. I was trying to figure out what zaza was. That mm-hmm. they say it means exotic. Oh, okay, so right. I thought zaza well, was that. About. There's nothing exotic. Everybody out here in Atlanta, they they the plug. Oh, here's here's the here's my favorite part. Guys mm-hmm. like telling me that they that they that they sell drugs. Like I'm not the feds. Okay. Um. <laughs> And they try to holler at me too. I don't want to be with you. You're a dummy. Okay. But like I said, oh, oh here's oh, here's my favorite part about people smoking, right? They love, they love all sharing the same blunt. Everybody, everybody's passing around. It's like six people on one blunt. Hell no. Oh, here's my other my favorite part. Here's my other favorite part about smoking, right? Um, not being able to go into people's homes. So you gotta be outside in either the heat or the um Either the heat or the cold, you know, that's terrible. Um, what's what's my other fact? You know, you you're like fighting off bugs. I know you guys don't get bugs out there, but like, you know. Um, not being in comfortable settings. Oh, here's my favorite part, guys. You smoke, yeah. See so hit the blood and get closer. Sir, what do you what, why are you naked? You remember that scene? Do you remember Money Talks? Do you remember the, oh, that yeah. movie Money Talks? Yeah, I remember, you remember that one. Chris Rock, not Chris Rock. Chris Tucker was in prison with Face on Love and mm-hmm. he took his shirt off and he was like, Yeah, yeah, that's what they be doing. Mm-mm. No, no more weed for, for Georgia, for Atlanta. No more weed. You guys are getting crazy out there. Getting naked. <laughs> No. Well, you guys get bugs, but we get crackheads in Los Angeles. We have crackheads here, too. Crackhead, you, crackhead and bugs? That's terrible. Yes. That's terrible. Everybody wants to move to Atlanta, right? But I'm like, bro, I don't know why y'all want to move out here. I said the weed is not legal. <laughs> that we don't have any beaches, and we got, we, got, we got cops on every corner. Why you want to move out here? At least, you know what? I'm going to keep it real with you. I went down. I was there in May. I don't, I, number one, I want to complain to you because it was, it was May 20th and it was 60, 60 degrees outside mm-hmm. during the day. I want to complain to you about that. Yeah. Complain to me. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily build the weather for Southern California, but you can definitely uh, tell me all your complaints. I see why y'all be wearing hoodies uh, throughout the day, but no, let me, let me say this. I was, I was walking down Santa mm-hmm. Monica Boulevard Beautiful. and I saw. I saw people, it was six, 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. I saw p- people in the ocean. It's 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're weird creatures. Californians are just weird creatures. I mean, you, ha- you have to be some sort of lizard to, to live out here because it's just hot and sunny. <laughs> Hot and sunny. I was, I, was, I was walking down the boardwalk smoking weed, and I'm like, bro, Georgia would never. Mm-hmm. And I came across a homeless person. You ever tried to, like, do a good deed and feed a homeless person, they decide to order the entire menu? Oh, yeah. No, no. The, the homeless out here, they want, they want to smoke your weed. They, 
they, they don't give a fuck about a cheeseburger. You give them a I'm dollar a, or a cheeseburger, my, they're like, what the fuck? My homeless person, my homeless person I encountered, like, mm-hmm. I, I felt, and you know, it was like, so, and I love, I love, I get off doing random acts of kindness, and I get so excited. Like, I be, there have mm. been times where I have le- legit, like, cried tears of joy, but one thing I'm never going to do is, like, showcase it. The day that you see me showcasing it, I need you to come to Atlanta and pimp slap the hell out of me and say, Kendra, what the, what are you thinking? I need you to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, Because I hate when people do that. Like, what, what is your purpose behind this? Are you trying to give glory and praise from everybody? You're lame. But no, what happened was he he only had enough money to probably buy a fry. Mm. <laughs> if that. One. Okay. Like a small, small. <laughs> small so I said, overcooked. I said, I said, hey. Yeah, I said, I said, you know, I, I pay for myself. I said, I said, look, I, I got you, bro. And he said, he's like, oh, thank you. And um, I ordered, he ordered like seven things, and I was <laughs> like, okay, this is this is this is costly. But but you know what? It was for good. Hey, I did, I did, I did something good. I said God's gonna bless me in due time. You know, whenever He decides to bless me, and so. Um, cause I used to sit here and be like, God, you saw my good works. And he put me on do not disturb. Um, back to the story. <laughs> Kendra, so, you, so you, yeah. Kendra, you just opened up a niche for OnlyFans. Yeah. You just opened yeah. up a niche for OnlyFans. So what, what's your, what's your thing on OnlyFans? Well, you know what? I, I buy homeless people food and I showcase it on, on OnlyFans. And if you want to see, uh, if you want to donate to homeless people to help me feed them, and you can you can see my tits after that. I mean, how <laughs> how magnificent and how much of a millionaire you would be because of that. And you are helping. That's a Nobel fucking peace prize. I'm showing my tits for the homeless of America. Right. No, that 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 would that's a great. That, would you like to be my pimp? Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a terrible no, host. I'm a terrible pimp. But one thing before before I let you go, um, I have to ask you: Do you do you record any of your sets when you when you do stand up? Yeah. So I post them on Tuesday nights. Um, I post like sixty second clips. Of, oh, my, cool. of my set on Tuesday nights and you know, just for people to show up people are like oh I want to support you and then the day it's time to support oh mm-hmm. man I fell asleep <laughs> okay. I woke up late my show is at 8pm uh, I woke up late sorry um, okay uh, how, how do you see okay one last question so you do record them do you see a difference between uh, you writing on cannabis versus writing off cannabis that's the thing. I've never written my jokes. I just talk off the handle. Mm, you know, okay. I, I just literally will just say, um, I'll, I'll say something like, I'll give you a quick two minute set what I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, if you ever borrowed $20 from me, do not pay me back on cash app. I did not give you 1968. <laughs> And you know what I, I've noticed, you know, it's only people, if y'all ever notice, it's only people who, who like the best stories come from folks who actually like need to borrow some money. The best stories. Like, I, I think now that I've actually have started like getting myself out there, I've been having random people hit my phone. I'll be like, Hey man, can you looking good? Your dreads are growing, man. That, that ass getting fatter. Hey, look, look, can I borrow like $25 for the light bill? I need, I need some money on the light bill. <laughs> What is twenty five dollars gonna do, people? Okay, what can I? You know what I'm not. Well, this is what y'all how, how y'all can get money out of me from now on. You listen. If you ain't changing my life one lick at a time, I don't want to hear it. Okay, I'm talk. I'm talking about the head so good that I done flipped off the bed. How how many of y'all in the audience? Like you right there, brother. You look like you look like you know what you're doing. You look like you done made some women cry. So so. <laughs> I'm gonna talk. I talk about the host. That's fucking He's awesome. The host be in my dream sometime. That's fucking <laughs> awesome. Well, at least I'm not in your nightmares. Kendra, can you tell us where we can find your magnificent self on Instagram or Facebook, Tinder, Grinder, uh, wherever you are these days, OnlyFans, um, 
to go ahead and take some time. I'm going to dance for comedy. I'm going to show my feet. I told two white men that on, on the shuttle bus to my car, and the one the guy's like, oh, he's an old man. I'm like, you know what? I like you, brother. You all right with me. All right, so my Instagram is the Kendra Crump Show. So D is in the K-Y-N as in Nancy, D-R-A-C-R-U-M as a Mary P's and Paul show S H O W not with no main sign, not no fake ass ASAP Rocky. <laughs> um, my YouTube is Kendra Crump K Y N D R A space C R U M as a Mary P's and Paul. And my podcast that Gil will be on at some point is the Kendra Crump show podcast. And that was it. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, I'm sorry that you got like the, the, Homeless people trying to smoke all your weed up. I guess they realized I was a foreigner. I'm not sure. As long as they're not taking my meth and cocaine, I think we're, uh, the homeless and I have an understanding. You ever try heroin? You ever try heroin? Oh, hell no. That is the one thing I will never try. DMT is one thing, right? Uh, I think, I don't know. I've been to, I've smoked so much shit that I have no clue if I, I can't put a finger on... Uh, with that trip might look like, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep it real. Too. I think I've done meth. I think I've done cocaine. <laughs> I and think it was all in the pill of called ecstasy. Yes, I think I've done my heart. No ecstasy. You don't even know what you're putting. So right? I think I have done meth and cocaine. I think I've done a lot of drugs. When I had that, when I tell you that ex that ex pill, I'm gonna wait, wait, one last quick story. I'm gonna I'm gonna give yeah. you my ex story. I'm gonna give okay. you. My, we're gonna close out on my ex story. Love so it. I remember, I remember having this thought in my head. I said, I want to try X. And, and then I had this homeboy of mine who told me that he does X. And I said, okay, well, he called it beans. I said, what are you talking about? What's, what's beans? And he's like, X. I'm like, okay, cool. I said, I want to try it. So th- this is the worst part. I should have made him pay for it, especially since he licked my cooter. But anyway, back to the story. So, so he gave me, I paid $5 for it. And I told my neighbors, like, hey, neighbors, I got some X. I said, I'm about to go try it. They said, okay, good for you, right? This is last year in November. And so I tried it. And then I was like, it was 2 p.m. I'm like, okay, like an hour later. I'm like, (laughs) like, or now 15 minutes later, it kicked in. I'm like, I'm not really feeling nothing. But they told me to drink a lot of water. But I remember my mouth was wet. So if I would have been like, had a a penis in my face, it would have been a great time. But it would have been a bad time because like, I would not have performed well. So I just remember, I kept having to spit. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was on, looking on YouTube watching Marvin Gaye's sexual healing. And my cat, the one I showed you, mm. she uh, was watching me. She was watching me. I was not watching her. And I was talking. I was slurring my words. And I then went to my room many hours later, six hours later, right? Damn. And I'm still high off X. And I hate it. It's the worst drug ever. It's six hours later. I'm in my room. I'm hearing the air whisper. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking to me and I remember I said I said God because my heart my, my chest was hurting at this point right I thought I, I overdosed and then I remember God I said God I want to be like in my mind I couldn't get the words up I'm like God I said I need for you to like tell me how do I become sober I called my weed man up to let him know I was high off X mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I told, I said, God, what do I do? I need to be like, you know, sober. And he said to me, he said, go outside and talk to your neighbors. It was Monday night in November. It was like the third week of November. Okay. Monday night or fourth week. And he said, I said, well, he's like, you heard me go out. Cause God don't be talking to me. Like I said, he be having me on do not disturb. And so I said, okay. So I went outside. My neighbors are outside smoking a blunt on the porch and they try to offer me the blunt. I'm like, gosh, I'm high off X. What's wrong with y'all? And so 10 minutes later, that cold air zapped the X out of me. Like it, like, so here's the trick. If you want to be sober, you have to go take a cold shower, a freezing shower, or you got to be outside in cold air. And I was good. And I had, I went to bed that night at 11 o'clock that night. My, the weed man, he checked up on me. He said I was going to be using some toys that night because I was going to be horny. I'm like, no, I'm not. (laughs) The horniness kicked in. I woke up to go to the restroom sometime in the middle of the night. I went back to sleep. I had a dream. People were sucking on my neck. I was about to get a train ran through. Damn. I was horny as hell. Okay. And 
Um, if I get a train ran through, I just want women to just all give me head. I want like a head train. <laughs> That's all I want. Head um, train. Take wait, wait. Get get guess the tongue. I want to be blindfolded. So with that being said, with that being said, I had um went woke up and I was just it was like what day was it Tuesday and I'm like yeah I'm not doing X again that I almost called the police on myself that is the worst drug ever in my life and I think it right. was like a, there was meth in it I'm sure cocaine was in it I'm sure heroin heroin was in it PCP like you don't know really what was in the X like yeah. this stuff is not our, uh, this stuff is man made yeah well the thing about ecstasy they cut it uh, there's there they like there's base like there's there's different base that they cook the uh, ecstasy pill out of and majority of them are uh there there's like a heroin base there's a crack base uh ecstasy <laughs> pill um i'm i'm dead serious like, i know that bro I, I literally did a combo meal yeah you did a combo meal yeah it was a blue it was so it was a blue pill what does that blue pill mean mm, did you take it like a morning after type of deal or Imagine, imagine Shut taking it. Shut up! <laughs> imagine. No, it was the color. The, the X pill was blue. That's what I'm saying. The X Imagine. Was blue. Hold on. Imagine fucking up at a pharmacy because your pharmacist is too high because he went to go. Um, they had this cannabis deal uh, down at the dispensary, and your pharmacist was so high uh, that day that he accidentally mixed. Uh, a plan B pill and an ecstasy pill. He was so high that he, he was like, ah, oh, fuck. I fucked up and gave her the wrong shit. I mean, it, it could be. I mean. No, no, Gil, listen. It no? was, the color was blue, okay? Mm -hmm. Since you, which, 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 did it come, what, was it cut from crack or heroin or angel dust? Which one was it cut from? It could be Viagra now that I think about it, if it's blue. Oh, God. All right. All right. We're going to end it there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I mean, it could, it could be. And then also, it's kind of funny that they call them uh, beans. Uh, that's another one, too. But we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for for next time. But uh, I'm going to close out and I'm going to let the music play out. And you can enjoy Mind Buzz Media on YouTube and uh, follow us on Instagram at instagram.com slash the mind buzz so i'm gonna let the music pay out kendra thanks again for uh stopping by so we'll uh catch you guys on another one thanks the mind buzz Podcast.